This is the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus 5G. And if you're in the market for a competitively priced smartphone, well, you've come to the right place. Xiaomi's brand, especially with the Redmi series, is all about the mid-range smartphone, the mid-ranger that can perform the functions of a flagship model. So if you're wondering what makes this phone any different, watch this video until the end to find out everything you should know about it. Without further ado, let's get to the video. There are five significant items you get in the box. First, you get a mini compartment that contains the SIM ejector, a phone case, a safety guide, and a manual. Next, you get the phone with its main specifications printed on the cover. And then you find a type C charging cord and a 120 watt adapter. I was pleasantly surprised by the charging speed of this guy, but more on that later in the video. That's all you get in the box and it's pretty much all you need. While the back of this phone embraces simplicity at its best, what got my attention was the design and placement of the LED lights. Unlike other phones with round and protruding LED lights, this one, this the flashlight here, is a thin horizontal line that blends into the back of the phone. You will not feel any bump when you rub your finger across it. Also, the flash is very bright, so please don't point it at your eyes. Just to the left of the flashlight in the three-section grid pattern are the cameras. Three of them. Two of them are bigger with the smaller one in the middle, but we will explore more on these cameras later in the video. You have the power and volume buttons to the right side, there's nothing on the left, and at the bottom is where you have the SIM slot, a microphone, a charging port, and the speaker grill. At the top is the second speaker grill to produce stereo audio, you also get two mics and an IR blaster. From the hardware alone, you can already tell that this phone will have a decent sound quality. I mean, that's two speakers, three mics, and we'll discuss more on that later in the video. So. Watch out for that. Despite being Redmi's first curved screen smartphone in this series, it carries a solid build. They did an excellent job on this one. Plus, you also get an extra screen protector on the display. Xiaomi says this phone is engineered for toughness, and that might be true because you can feel the build quality. You can feel how well built it is in the hands. The front screen here is protected by Corning's Gorilla Glass Victus, so there's that resistance to scratches and damage. The device also has an IP68 rating, which means it's resistant to water and dust. While I wish the sides were a little bit slimmer, it's slim enough, but I wish it was a little bit slimmer. I think the aluminum frames on this design here will give you that peace of mind because this phone is actually durable. It feels solid in your hand and it can take a few falls, but still you should probably put a case on this phone. Thankfully, we have one in the box. What do you guys think about this design? Let me know. Also, while the phone has plastic on the back, the fingerprint smudges are pretty difficult to hide since it's fiberglass, it's a fiberglass finish. Your fingers leave a trail everywhere they touch, so I would advise always using a phone case to avoid those noticeable smudges on the back of this device. This device weighs approximately 204.5 grams and has a thickness of 8.9 millimeters. However, they did say that this phone is designed to be durable, which explains the thickness and the weight, so I'm not passing any judgment. Although, if you use this phone for extended periods of time, you'll be reminded of how, you know, how it weighs a tiny bit more than what you're probably used to. What I do like is the size of the bezels. I've seen thinner bezels, but I love how the bezels almost have the same measurement all around. There's like this equal symmetry and it's oddly satisfying. The phone is 6.67 inches, meaning you have enough room to do anything on your phone, whether you're scrolling through social media, whether you are reading anything or whether you have, you know, you are watching something, you have a big display for all of that. Also, because of the bezels, you have a screen to body ratio of 89.7%, which is big enough for movies and playing those games that you like and navigating through the phone. While watching a movie or playing a game, the experience is quite immersive and you can actually get quite engrossed in it. In addition to this display size, you have an AMOLED panel with good colors. What of the resolution? Well, this is 2712 by 1220 pixels, a little more than the regular 1080p screen that you would get, and that is very welcome. Naturally, there is like a quick response and fluidity when you are using the phone or browsing through the apps or through the phone itself, thanks to that 120Hz refresh rate. You can either use the default option of you know refresh rate switching when you are using your phone, or you can choose to upscale it to 120Hz or downscale it to 60Hz and fix it there if you want an extra extended battery life. Now let's talk about the sound quality of this phone. You have Dolby Atmos, what more could you ask for? And of course you have dual speakers. I could actually feel the sound coming from either speaker. Playing a game or watching a movie at a low volume or medium volume is good. When you turn it up to the maximum, it gets loud and it maintains that crispiness. Another thing I noticed is that whenever you open an app that needs sound, 
a subtle notification pops up to the left indicating that Dolby Atmos is enabled. Also, there are other sound enhancement features when you check the side and you enhance to improve the stereo audio. But Xiaomi themselves said that you will notice this when you're using headphones. For instance, there's this enhanced speech option. There's also this play audio with screen off feature and this allows you to play videos in the background when your screen is off. Lastly, I know it's not necessarily part of the sound of smartphones, but the haptics on the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus is very good. You'll notice this when you're closing the phone, when you are typing, and even when you increase the volume, especially when you increase the volume and reach the maximum volume, it has this repeated haptic feedback and it just, it just makes the phone fun to use in my opinion. One of the best features of the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus may just be the cameras. You have a 200 megapixel primary camera on par with flagship level capabilities. It's capable of zooming from 1x up to 10x, that's you know, the primary camera and it captures good images in well-lit environments and even in areas with poor lighting. However, I noticed that when you're in a very dark area, it tries to lighten up the photo artificially and it sometimes leads to the picture being overexposed. While the phone's image processing is good, it occasionally over edits the photos and it usually results in a somewhat artificial looking image. The edges are excessively sharpened and there appears to be some spillover. However, the overall quality of these images remain commendable. Also, when reviewing the photos you've taken, you can zoom in all the way to examine your images closely. Redmi calls this the 200 megapixel review and you have to take the pictures with the 200 megapixel camera in 200 megapixel mode anyway. Do you think this is a useful feature though? Let me know in the comments. In addition to the primary camera, there are two other secondary cameras. The first one is an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera. It's capable of capturing an expansive 06 times ultra wide field of view. The second one is a 2 megapixel macro camera that is dedicated to capturing close-up images with some detail. The camera also records video in 4K resolution at a frame rate of up to 30 frames per second when you're using the 1x or the 2x zoom camera. However, it is limited to recording at 1080p resolution and 30 frames per second when you're using the ultra wide camera. You get an optical image stabilization and electronic image stabilization or dual stabilization that's added to the phone. It's more like a stabilization two-factor authentication. Anyway, the two of them work hand in hand to help stabilize the shakes and camera movements to get more viewable pictures and videos. In addition to the portrait and night modes, you'll find various other creative options like pro mode that allow for manual control over the camera settings. You have panorama mode that lets you capture wide landscapes. You have short film mode, which applies cinematic filters and color grading to your videos while there's slow motion, time lapse, and long exposure modes for more visual effects. Let's not forget the selfie camera though. It's a 16 megapixel selfie camera, and this is what a picture that I took on it looks like. It can record videos in 1080p resolution at 60 frames per second, as well as 720p resolution at 30 frames per second. While I would have loved to see a 4K resolution on the front facing camera, I think you already have enough options at the back. The Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus comes with Xiaomi's latest Mi UI 14. I played around with it and here's what I found. Of course, we've got the floating window which we kind of touched on in a bit with the Adobe Atmos stuff. If you're into multitasking, it's quite convenient and you just get to minimize your preferred applications into one streamlined row. When you open an app within the floating window, it comes out as a compact floating square or rectangle and you can use this app without closing the current app that you are using. There's also the flexibility of adjusting the app's size or effortlessly tossing it aside and you can return to the other app. You can just bounce back between apps. And when you're done with it, you can drag it like this to dismiss it. You get a few options to take screenshots. And if the content is on a long screen, maybe like a website or a web article, you can choose the scroll option. This will come in handy and you can take very long screenshots in the process. This is not necessarily new, but it's a welcome addition. I also noticed that there were quite a few ads on the phone. We've also got a MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Ultra processor on here, which leverages a 4 nanometer chipset and it will give you all the efficiency you will need on an already solid smartphone. I think you get a lot in terms of performance from this phone. Gaming was just a breeze for me here and the back of this phone remained cool throughout the entire usage and gameplay and the usage is just fluid. Also, you can expand the small locking line on your screen when you're playing any game. So when you do this, you see the game turbo feature. You get to perform basic setting adjustments. For instance, you can enable do not disturb mode on your phone to minimize distractions. And you can also take screenshots 
and adjust other settings. The Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus offers a generous memory configuration. It supports 12 gigs of RAM already and if for whatever reason you need more RAM, which I'm judging you, you can always get as high as 12 gigabytes more RAM from your storage to make it a total of 24 gigabytes of RAM. Why do you need 24 gigs of RAM? Additionally, you have 256 gigabytes of storage and you can even get a higher 512 gigabytes of storage. Um, but this one here is actually the 512 gigabytes of storage version and thank you. Just take 12 gigs more for your RAM. Unfortunately though, there is no slot for external storage expansion. What you get here is a dual SIM card setup. You can put two different SIMs in the phone or you can simply use an eSIM. There's an option for using an eSIM on this guy. The Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus has a non-removable 5000 mAh battery. Uh, during our tests here, we got very good battery life. After about three hours or three and a half hours of consistent gaming, scrolling of social media and taking photos, the device was still at around 86% from 100%. Doing the math, even if you spend around eight hours of using this phone on a day-to-day -day basis, you should be okay with a full battery life for your day before you charge it at night. And even more impressive to me though, just like I mentioned in the beginning of this video is this 120 watt charger that comes in the box of this phone. During our charging speed test, the device charged from 0 to 100% to fully charge in just 33 minutes. Notably, it achieved a 34% charge in just 10 minutes and it charged to 100% in the subsequent 23 minutes. The overall performance was undoubtedly impressive for this charging speed. Also, when it comes to face unlock and the fingerprint reader, they are just fast over here. Oh, and of course, it's 2024 and it's a 5G capable device. Uh, it's in the name. Presently, this phone is selling at 683,850 Naira due to the current exchange rate. For this smartphone's current and updated price, in Naira at least, check my pinned comment for the updated price. It's important to note that this price may fluctuate upwards or downwards when you decide to buy it. However, this is the current price. This is the current market price. So what do you guys think? What do you think of this phone at this price point? What do you think of the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus? Is it your mid-range smartphone of choice based on all what you've seen so far? Would you consider getting one? Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the very next one.